We're doing uh, week two of This Is My Story. If you missed last week, I'm sorry. It was a wonderful, wonderful testimony of God's faithfulness. Uh, I want to thank Joy again for sharing. Um, and this week, we're going to be talking about being made new. I was uh, heading up Monday morning. I came to the office and got a few things done and um, was heading up to see Pastor Rick before his surgery. And I come around the corner of, uh, on, the, on the little Parkview loop, and my truck made a noise. And I'm like, yeah, my truck is pretty old. It makes noise all the time. Didn't think anything of it. Then I go to turn back into the parking lot, and it made a noise when I knew something's not right. I said, oh, boy. I'm not a mechanic, but I know when something's wrong. Right, Butch? Right? You just know. When there's like, like, a, like it's dying, that was, that was the noise when I turned like this. And, and, and I pull it in, and after a fiasco of trying to get our, in, our insurance to send a, a wrecker to bring it back to New Haven, we got it done. So for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I had to drive around my wife's uh, Honda Odyssey. And they've updated them a little bit since my, my 2007 truck. And so I had to drive around this beep, happy, high-tech, steering wheel jiggling car. <laughs> like, if, my car, if, my, if I'm driving my truck and my wheel starts jiggling, I know, like, okay, either get back on the road or, like, something's really wrong. This thing just, if I'm not in my lane, it's like, I'm like, stop. And then all the notifications, they want you to focus on driving, but why do they put so many notifications on that thing? <laughs> you don't want me to be a distracted driver. Stop putting all the beepy things there. <laughs> I'm very, very certain that Thursday night when I finished driving that van, because I went back and got my truck so, on Friday, but when it, Thursday night I was done and Sarah was heading down to Marion the next day, so she took it. That van took a, a deep breath and a sigh, I'm sure. <laughs> And I half expected it because it, it helped with lane assist. It really wants to be helpful. It's a super good helper. And so, and, and I'm, not, I, I'm not a bad driver, but I, I'm not the most, like, thoughtful driver. And so if I'm drifting a little bit out of my lane, I'm like, it's all pavement, okay? Lane, <laughs> lanes are suggestions. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking a little bit. There's some truth. But anyway. But I half expected that car on Thursday night to say, I quit. You've got this. No more lane assist. You've either got it or you don't. My truck doesn't have all that. It's pretty low tech compared to all the, the new bells and whistles. I'm sure I could add some fancy backup camera or try to get, bring my truck into the tech-friendly lanes, but it just wasn't built like that. While now the newer vehicles, that, that stuff is standard. You come, it comes just standard. If you and I are trying to live a holy life, I wonder this morning, a life that is, that is set apart, different from those who don't have a relationship with Jesus. If you and I are trying to live a righteous life, one that has been made right through the work of Jesus on the cross, and we've been forgiven of our sins. If you and I are trying to earn our salvation by being good enough, if you and I are trying to update our, update our attitudes and our words and our actions and habits and keep the same old person that we used to be, there's something very wrong. Lifeway, God's plan isn't to renovate you and your heart when you come to him. He doesn't plan on calling you to a way of life that is ill-fitting and exhausting because you don't have the heart for it. When you begin again and you start a relationship with Jesus, you get a new heart. You get a new truck. It's like me, my truck get, becoming a new truck, like a whole brand new whole thing, not me trying to retrofit it. I feel like sometimes in the church, if we aren't careful, we're just trying to, to, to manage our sin, to not be bad, but when God says, I don't want you to just do sin management, I want you to give me your life and let me lead you and guide you and change you because I want you to have a new heart. But sometimes we like, oh, that's just, that's just how I used to be, and so this is just who I am. No, he says he'll give us a new heart and a new spirit, and that will be made new. Have you been made new this morning? Ezekiel 36 says this, starting in verse 25, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. Verse 26, and I will give you what? 
a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your old, stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Do you have that this morning? A tender, responsive heart. And then it says, I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. Today, through the testimony of Jeff, it's coming up in a few minutes. I hope you realize that your story isn't one where God took the old you and said, yeah, we'll just wing it. I hope you, that the old you will eventually, through good old American hard work and ingenuity, through years of good sermons or bad sermons, through songs that you hear that don't start on the right beat, and then you get, dis- then you get like super distracted and it's like, what was Pastor Andy doing? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you think through the guilt and the shame that, that you'll receive by some well-meaning and, and some not so well-meaning Christian that you'll eventually be made new. That's absurd to think that because when we come to Christ, he says, I am making you new. It's, it's not, it's not, that, that's like me thinking that with, with the, new stru- the new shocks that I got on my truck, that now means that I have power and heated seats. I just I don't. That's like me thinking that I now have lane assist. Thank the Lord I don't. <laughs> and let's go one step further. That's like me thinking now that my truck is, 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 is a, an electric truck. It's a brand new truck. It's not. So why do we come to Jesus and we ask him to forgive us and then we expect him to not change us and give us a new heart and we're still trying to live how he wants us to live over here with the thoughts and the actions and we really haven't let him give us a brand new heart. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. The old life is gone, a new life has become. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Jeff, come on up. He's going to share. I've sent him a few questions that I wanted him to to answer. He said he was going to go about 25 minutes. And I said, well, okay. And so he has some questions. That I'll answer, or that, that he's, I can ask, and then you can answer. We, get, we need to get you a mic. Hold on a second. There you go. It's off. It's off. We'll turn it on. I'm super excited. Jeff, how long, how long have you been at Lifeway with your family? Six years. Six yep. years. Six years. And so we've seen him grow. We've seen God change him, make him new. Um, he served in a lot of different different places, but I'm excited to hear his answers to some of these questions. The first question that, that Jeff, I kind of want you to, to answer this morning is tell me, tell me maybe two or three changes Go ahead. that you've seen or others have seen in your life from before when you didn't know Jesus to where you're at now. So just two or three changes and take it away. Well, I, I think that uh, my kids would be very happy that... Uh, they're not here to listen to this because they listen to it a lot. <clears throat> and I, I think my, my wife can, uh, can testify that uh, how I've changed. I've changed in uh, many ways. Um, my son, Christopher, at the age of five, would always ask me, Daddy, you going to church? And I would just, without hesitation, say no. Every time. And he's a pretty persistent little fella. <laughs> uh, and still is on what he wants. And he got what he wanted. He got his stubborn old daddy to come to church. Set aside that pride. And and just just I just wanted to make him happy. I wasn't trying to make myself happy. 
by no means whatsoever because I would see him and I would see his little cute little chubby smile and I think, man, this is worth it. He's happy. Okay, this is cool. And as time went by, he would keep asking me every Sunday. It's like, dude, come on. Give it a break. Don't be next Sunday. I'm thinking to myself, didn't say that to him, but I think, yeah, I'm going to go, buddy. And I would see his face light up. And I thought, man, this, again, this is worth it. That little boy got me to accept Christ as my personal Savior. We would come here, and we sat back there where Ricky and his family would sit, a couple rows behind him. And eventually, I would I worked shift, so I'd be missing some Sundays when I would come. Eventually, we weren't sitting back there by Ricky and his family. And they were walking up here. I'm like, whoa, whoa, where are we going? <laughs> what, what's, what's going on? I've missed like three Sundays. But well, Dad, we sit up front now. I'm thinking, oh, Lordy. <laughs> Out of my comfort zone again. That stubbornness is like, I don't want to go up here. I want to go back there. But I came up here. And I look over, and I, he's all happy. And it's like, man, I, I love this. So eventually, long story short here, I would look forward to coming to church. You know, I'd get off work at 9 o'clock in the morning instead of just going to bed and telling my kids no, telling my wife no, and telling God no. I'm going to bed. Go on. Eventually, I loved the thought of coming to church, being around believers, and making myself happy, making God happy. And I just... I thank, I thank Christopher many times for getting me to come. Because like I said, he gets his mind focused. There's no stopping him. And I, I've done a lot of things here at Lifeway. I, I drive bus. I volunteer for Kids Connect, thanks to my wife, who volunteers me for a lot of things <laughs> that I don't know about until that Sunday. Oh, by the way. Oh, good. Another out of my comfort zone. Another pride thing. This is about pride. I'm a very prideful person. I don't let people in. So you guys are all lucky. I'm letting you all in on how I feel. And I'll probably cry. And you'll see me cry and I don't care. But I'm letting you all in. And I just, I thank God for that. Because I would pray to let him, to help me. Be more open with my feelings and be more sociable. And I, he's done that. And I've suffered from depression, anxiety. My anxiety is gone. I prayed for that. I would, I would constantly, constantly think about death, about the, the worst. It's just, the anxiety was just overwhelming. And I would pray and pray and pray, and it's like, that's gone now. And it, it feels great. And I still battle with depression a little bit, but we're working on that, him and I. And uh, let me keep going. You I can the, keep going. The next I'll, question, no, I'll you give you the sit back. I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I remember, as the months and a, a few years went by, I remember thinking, man, this Christian life is kind of hard. It's not what it started out to be. Go, you know, I'd go to church, read the Bible, pray. Again, I would, my wife would volunteer me for things. And it still is like, man, there's something just still not right. And I would hear Pastor Rick preach, you know, Give it to God. And I'm thinking, okay, give what to God? What, what am I supposed to give him? I come to church. I pray. I read the Bible. My wife volunteers me. <laughs> so what else is there? I'm thinking to myself, Pastor Rick, and as I sit down there and I feel that he's looking at me every time. <laughs> but... uh he says you have to give every single thing to God. Your marriage, 
your life, your Christian life, your work life, your finances. Give it all to him. Let him have control over your life. Oh, control over my life? I have control over my life. I can do all that other stuff, but I still got to have control. Okay, we we got to split this. You can do a little, and I'll do the rest. <laughs> and that's what I honestly thought. But, you know, as the times went by, and it's like, man, this, okay, I've given him my family, my kids. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But I haven't fully given him everything, which is control. Again, pride. Pride is a very uh, big thing for a lot of guys. Not just for me, but for me, that's that's was my life was pride. I don't ask for help. I didn't. If I, I'm doing a project and I can't figure it out, it either stays half done or I just don't do it. And I will not ask for help. I do now. And uh, I think some of that credit goes to my wife for... You gonna get this done? Wait, wait, wait. I love you, honey. I love you, but so I do love you. But uh, when when you actually realize, yeah, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, but let God have control. Man, is it worth it? I'm not saying it's sunshine and rainbows and. But it sure makes it a whole lot easier and a whole lot uh, easier to go through your daily life when you know that God has it all. Amen. Not just a little bit like I wanted or three quarters of it, but all of it, every single aspect of your life, when you know God has it, it's just, it's easy. No matter what the circumstances are, if, if you believe in God, accept God, and pray. He may not give you what you want right then and there that I've learned. And he may not give you the things that you desire. He gives you the things you need. He gives you the things that uh, you might not need that you're not going to get because he knows you don't need it. And I've learned that uh, in the, it says in the Bible... To share your feelings, your thoughts with other, with other Christians and other believers. It's biblical. I've heard that a couple times. And it is true. You know, my wife is my best friend. I've cheated her out of so many years of not telling her how I feel. Truly how I feel. But she's my best friend. And why would you do that to your best friend? I mean, I've told Pastor Rick, I've told Pastor Andy how I feel, Tara, Pastor Gary a little bit. Those are the only people that I've ever told anything about. Never my parents, never my sister, never my brothers, never my father-in-law, mother-in-law, cousins, aunts, uncles, nobody. Those are the only ones in my whole entire life that I've ever shared how I truly feel. And I've robbed a lot of people from uh, praying for me and just listening or giving me advice. And I, again, I say it's biblical that we do that. And I, I just think, I thank God for many things. I thank him for Lifeway Church. I thank him for each and every one of you who are listening to me and thinking, please be done. Because I'm thinking the same thing. But again, I do this with my kids too. I just go on and on and on and on. Am I done? Well, you just said you wanted to be done. Oh no, I, I got a little bit more to go. Okay, okay. That's probably what they're thinking. But uh, if I could go back 20 years ago, Tara and I would come here on occasion. And we would come with her grandma and grandpa, her aunts and uncles. Aunt Cindy, her kids, Stephen and Michael. We would pop in here occasionally, every, probably once every 
couple months or whatever. And I, I do remember seeing Butch up here giving his story. I do remember that. And uh, I would tell the old, the old Jeff from 20 years ago, it's all worth it. Just let it go. Let everything go. Give it to God. And everything will be okay, even though it's, you're going to go through hard times. God's going to be there. God's going to take care of us. And I would, you know, I, you, can, you can give him anything you want. Because he already knows what you're going through. He knows what I'm going through. He knows I'm a nervous wreck right now. <laughs> but he already knows. The thing is, you have to give it to him. Confess, give it to him, ask him to take everything. And it, it's kind of weird because I see, I see stickers that say, God's my co-pilot. Why not let him be the pilot? You know, you be the co-pilot and let him be the pilot. He'll get you to your destination. And I, I heard a, we were in parenting classes, one of the first ones I went to, and Joy and I were talking. I don't remember what it was about, but she had gave me a little piece of advice and said, anything worth doing is hard. And I remembered that, surprisingly, because I don't remember a lot of things. And I used that to my kids, Joy, and they probably get sick of hearing it. But the thing is, anything worth doing is hard, no matter what it is. And if you don't give it to God, every single thing in your life it's going to be hard. Thank you. When he, when he said, <laughs> what did he say? What? Before I keep going, I, I was just sitting there thinking about what he said about how he hadn't really shared anything, and when we preached a couple weeks ago that we're called to bear one another's burdens, and people around you can't bear your burden if you don't let them. Did you hear what he said? For years, he kept other people from blessings. He didn't say that, but he said that. How many blessings are you keeping people from because you're not sharing? Whew. Oof. God is making us new. It's a journey. It's part of every believer's experience. And I was reminded this morning that there is a temptation when we come to church and we come together to see everybody else and it seems like they have it all together. Right? Everybody's hair is done and their clothes are, you got everything together and everything looks good. But sometimes our lives are just a mess. And I want you to understand that when Christ begins this process and it starts making us new, that doesn't mean that everything just falls right into place and everything always goes perfectly. You heard last week, Joy's testimony. You have a testimony. You know. We know these things. But it's sometimes so easy to think, well, I'm a new creation. Everything's going to be new. It's all going to be great. And then when it doesn't turn out that way, we get discouraged and we get depressed and we think, well, I'm doing something wrong. God must not love me or I must not be in the right spot or doing the right thing or singing the right song or whatever it is. But it, it, it's, it's God wanting us to learn to rely on him in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. He will help make us new. I also want to remind us this morning, when Jesus makes you new, it affects everyone around you. Your spouse, your family, your coworkers, your friends, your enemies. Whew. Think about that one this morning. When Jesus made you new, how did your enemies change? As he's making you new, how do you view your enemies different? When he makes you new, it affects everybody. It affects your church family. It affects the people around you. I believe that God can make such an amazing impact in our life that we just let him he wants to take the old and change it with the new through that process that, is, that his mercies are new 20 years ago, right? That's what the scripture says, that his mercies were new for Pastor Rick last week. No, what does it say? It says his mercies are new every single day. 
when we wake up, his mercies are new. And, and we, we, we read and we sing that, that his mercy and his, and his goodness are following us yesterday. No, it says for the rest of our lives, that it's following us. So why do we think that when we come, it's like, oh, we got it all under. No, it's, gonna, it, it, it's a process. Then through the change, he has the opportunity to impact so many around you. And you then become the shining light of faithfulness that we talked about last week. You become a light of God's mercy and his grace because how could he have changed me? If people that the old me could see, the, 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 if they could see the old me, that, that people now would be like, oh, wow, you, you, you were like that? And if the old people that you used to hang out with, with the old you could see you now, what would they say? Wow, what a difference or, huh? Ooh. God wants to change us for the people around us, for us to change us, to make us new, to make us more like his son. If the people around you could see you, that used to know you, how, would, they, would they recognize you? I want to end with, with this today, Romans 6. I jumped ahead a little bit, but Romans 6, 1 says this. Well, then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, the old way, new way, since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in baptism, we joined him in his death, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, it says this, now we also may live new lives. Now we also may live live new lives. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Have you been set free from the power of sin? Or does sin still have you? My hope this morning is that some of us aren't sitting around carrying the weight of the old person we used to be that has had their sins forgiven by the work of Jesus on the cross, but they walk around carrying the residue of who they used to be. Well, Pastor Andy, I've always struggled with doubt. Well, Pastor Andy, I, I've always struggled with anxiety. And I always, I, I just, I'm just a fearful person. My mom was like that, and her mom was like that, and her mom's mom's mom was like that. It's just who I am. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Now we also may live new lives. Don't tell me what God can't do. Don't tell me what God can't do. Don't tell me what God can't do. Yeah. I'm serious. We sit around here and say, this is just how I've always been. It's how I'm always going to be. I'm just always a worrier. I'm just always angry. My fuse is just always short. I'm just always going to have lust issues and bitterness issues. And I envy all the time. And I'm just jealous of everybody. I want a new van that beeps at me. Mm -mm. I don't struggle with that. I just, I'm, ju I'm not, I don't, I, I just like to share people's business. I'm not a gossiper. Ooh. Just a prayer request. But I guess it's just how God made me. Don't tell me what God can't do. When he makes us new, he makes us new. Either he, either he does it or he doesn't do it. That doesn't mean we're always perfect. I'm not saying once you stop, well, I don't worry anymore. Poof, it's gone. I'm, I'm saying it's a process. It's a process that we walk into that is called Christian maturity. We mature in our faith. And he grows all of the fruits of his spirit. But it's just how it's made. It's just how I'm made. I struggle with these things. In the words of a former U.S. president, wrong. You're just wrong. That's not how God wants you to live. And I hope that you're not staying there. A fallen world and, and sin entering it led that down that path. God is offering a new path to make us new. So tell me again how all the things you struggle with that are mentioned specifically in the Bible... 
And we're told not to worry, not to be anxious, don't be angry and let, your, let the sun go down on your anger. Tell me again that all of that is just a part of your personality and that God can't change you. Tell me again. And I'll say, don't tell me what God can't do. Some of you this morning, you need made new. You haven't started that relationship. You need a new lane and a new path, and you know it. I'm, praying, I'm going to pray for you in a minute. If somebody wants to go get the kids, um, we're, we're, we're heading down towards baptism. But I'm going to be praying for you in a minute. Some of you are following and maybe have been following God for some time, but you've allowed old ways and things you shouldn't allow to stay in your life. And I'm telling you this morning that God wants to change you and to make you new. He wants you to grow and he wants you to change. He wants to take the doubt and the worry and the anxiety and the fear and the jealousy and the bitterness and the rage and the, the, all of that stuff. He wants to take it and free you from that this morning. Don't tell me what he can't do. Don't tell me the stuff that you're holding on to that he's saying let go of. Did you hear him say it this morning? He said, I had to let go. I had to let go. What are you holding on to this morning that you need to let go? We all struggle with things. And don't for a minute think that everybody's sitting here, oh, I'm fine. Like, no, we all have our thing. We all have things that we struggle with that we need to consistently go to the foot of the cross, to the throne of heaven, and lay it down at the feet of God. And say, God, here I am. This week, I, I just worried so much. I struggle with every decision. Every decision I made, whether it was what we're going to eat or, or what we had to do at work or what, what car to drive or, or when do I do this or when do I that, it just sent me spinning in a circle and a circle of worry. And God, I'm sorry. Because you want me to live in peace. God, I've been so angry. Have you ever, you ever get angry and you forget what you're angry about? <laughs> just, oh, just me, okay. I'm not really angry. You're just upset. You're just... Do you believe in that moment that God can change you? If you say, God, here I am. I'm not sure why I'm upset, but I'm upset. God, I'm not sure why I have so much anxiety about this simple decision, but I have a lot of anxiety. It says, do not worry. Be anxious for nothing. Are, are those suggestions... I don't, I don't think they are. I'm pretty sure it's scripture. That God is speaking to our hearts when he wants us to continue to be made new. Some of you have been following down that path and you need to be made new this morning. Do you remember your baptism story? Do you remember when you came up and you made this public confession of faith? Do you remember some of you? I was talking, some of you were, were baptized a little different, and so you were baptized a little younger, and so you don't remember. But for those of you that do, and you made that decision to follow Christ at a, at a later age, and you were baptized, do you remember your baptism? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was old, this, living this old way of life, but then Jesus found me, and he changed me, and he made me new. God is in the business of life change. He's in the business of changing our lives. When you confessed at that baptism that Jesus was your Savior, do you remember that? That he died on the cross, dying for our sins, and then being buried three days and being raised to death over victory, giving us victory over, over sin and death. And it's all enough to change out your heart for a new heart. Today we get to celebrate a life that has been made new and is being made new. God used Jeff, he used Christopher, then he used Jeff. And the new heart that he gave him to affect the path that Jasmine's on and it leads her to today. Before we have her come up, I'm going um, to pray real quick. But before I pray, I want to just give us the space for you and I this morning, right now, to be made new, or to be made new even more. Psalm 139, starting in verse, verse uh, 23, is a prayer that I, I think we could pray every single day. That, could make, that makes us right with God, and today we could be made new or be made newer. So I want to read this, this verse together as our prayer 
Because you have 23 and 24. Okay. Let's read it together. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. That's a simple, simple verses, but it's super straightforward. Search me, know me, test me. 